Yoo-hoo! It's the time! Package from China time, so let's go! <laughs> hey, hey! Welcome back to the channel! It's awesome that you're tuning in. In today's video, we are going to take a close look at a new plug-and-play device from a friend from China. This is going to be the brand new Sega Genesis plug-and-play solution. I've been reviewing all kinds of different versions, but this is the SG800. Huh. Yeah, really curious how it is. Is it overall a like, good performance? Is the emulation great? And can we even play more than Sega Genesis? So in some of these crazy sales, you can buy these things for not a lot of money. And sometimes it's absolutely nuts that you can even like make it for this. So what are we getting? That's of course the question, particularly when it comes to the emulation performance. Here on the channel, we have reviewed all kinds of plug and play solutions. Also when it comes to 8-bit and 16-bit, I'm a big fan of the 16-bit era. And I was curious, is this new generation of S the SG800 actually worth picking up? I can tell you the first impression of the controllers, it's not bad at all. So it looks very legit. And also when it comes to the D-pad feel, it's the floating D-pad like the original six button controller. And this thing is absolutely great. Okay, so it will be powering on with one single battery. They're claiming that it is going to be seven hours on one battery, but I'm guessing it goes a bit depending like what kind of quality battery, because we do have some differences in there when it comes to the brands. And let's see what we're having more. It comes with a micro USB cable, and this is the game system. Yeah, actually, that's it. With the new technology nowadays, they don't need a lot. You need to remove the cap. The HDMI plug will be the one that you're going to be using because we're just going to be plugging this thing in. Then we're going to be using the micro USB. It's going to be plugged into the side over there. And we're going to be sticking this thing. You can use it in a monitor or television. So it takes consideration if you're having this. Uh, you can also use just normal 5 volt for powering this on and that's the only thing. You need to also do double check your SD card, maybe my backup disk because these four gigabytes, very tiny SD cards can get corrupted. They're not using any brands whatsoever. And with the price point you're now paying, yeah, it's really a major problem. The previous one did die off. So that's the reason I also picked up another one. The unfortunate part is if you want to plug in the USB cable and the HDMI, this is not going to be fitting. So we're going to need an extension cable that was not included in the device itself. Oh man, Whew, I need to dust this thing. <laughs> so this is actually how the configuration will be. This is the five volt adapter for giving you some power. And we're just going to be plugging in with the, let's say extension cord. These things are a couple of, let's say euros. I would say it's always easy and very easy just having your collection. So just pick it up for a couple of euros from AliExpress. Because it always comes in handy, as you can see over here. What is interesting with the controllers, we do have the option to choose to for player one or player two underneath over here. So let's set this down to player one. Let's set this one to player two. Yep. And let's put in some batteries. So one thing I wonder, can we just navigate through the menu with both controller, controllers or only with player one? So that's the first test we're going to be doing. Okay, so that seems to be working, but this one doesn't do anything. But we do have the indication over here that it's actually like powered on. So let's just play some games uh, the only biggest downside to this is if your controllers are getting broken whatsoever yeah you will have a problem because there is no of like adding another controller so i'm very glad that these stars are very good overall quality the navigation of the menu is kind of weird or ah we need to go to a certain direction if you want to go to a certain category so you don't need to press left or right or whatsoever hmm, that's interesting but let's look into the main menu. Having sports, shooting, fighting, FC games, and puzzle, and the adventure. Oh man, I need to get used to the controls. Okay, so let's press the start and let's see what we're having with sport games. Action 52, all kinds of weird stuff. The menu does work quite fast. And we can just actually scroll through the list itself. Mega games 1 and 6, sometimes it doesn't make any sense. On the sports, we're also having the racing games. And we do have like all kinds of different stuff going on over here. Road Rash, one, two, and three. Test Drive, and Tiny Twist Avengers. Here. Oh, but it's the All Stars of Football game. Okay, okay. And we can just press start by actually like booting up the game. 
then of course having the special menu pressing select to start in the game itself and here we quit quick load quick save we can set to scaling up or scaling down in this case and even have a different region so software wise it's absolutely great but let's make a quick save let's see how we can make quick save pressing start over here we can make multiple saves and let's load from there so absolutely amazing so let's say we're going to be doing this let's save again it will ask you if you want to override it so that's absolutely great and we can just quit to the main menu pressing slide will bring you back having the shooting over here adventurous boy is that the correct name that's kind of weird so there's actually like famicom games there's a little bit of a downside that this doesn't have any screenshot whatsoever. Test a strike. And of course the final test will be like testing out a couple of games just to see how they will overall play and run. But so far, select, we'll bring you back. Let's check out the fighting games. All kinds of weird stuff over here. Earthworm Jim. Mortal Kombat. Now let's go back to the Famicom and we'll check the loading screen. And it's actually doing nothing at this point. Oh, there we go. So it seems to be that we even have the option to play Famicom games. So that's kind of cool. So I'm guessing also you can add games to that folder over there. Puzzle. And then having the adventure itself. So this is a very very cool overall solution when it comes to the sega stuff 60 bit only but let's get into the gameplay and let's see how the overall emulation actually is i do hear that the audio is kind of weird or it's actually i'm not used to it because normally we're having the pal system going on so the next thing that we're going to be doing is testing out can we actually like use this thing when it comes to playing fighting games yeah so the controls are just perfect I do wonder if we're going to be going into the screen settings. Let's scale it up. And you can just automatically let's put it in the normal SPS ratio. But that seems to be working just fine. And what I love about this is that you can actually very easily go back to the main menu and just choose a different game. And just do that. And loading times are like almost instant. So one of the reasons I choose Mortal Kombat 1, I can just dream this overall soundtrack. And I can tell you that so far so good, even with Turtles, we didn't have any problems whatsoever. But it's kind of cool that the six button automatically have been configured, so the middle buttons will be for the blocking situation. Oh man, the Sega Genesis has so many cool games. Biohazard Battle, I can still remember when this thing was like getting in the bargain box so many years ago. Now it's quite expensive if you want to buy it. Well, at least maybe in different regions it's going to be cheaper. But it's absolutely a very cool shmup. And also for this kind of games, the D-pad is absolutely responding. I don't notice any input lag when it comes to, let's say, this Overall, as a gameplay experience on this device, it's just great. So in the end, we can keep testing all kinds of games, but so far I have seen everything works perfectly. Of course, I'm pressing the freaking annoying button again. For the powering up. So what happens actually if I'm going to be into the menu and we're going to be checking out the, let's say, we're going to the poll. Let's see if that has any results. No, I don't hear any difference when it comes to that. No, no, there is no difference there. So I'm guessing this has have something to do if you're going to be adding yourself some PAL system or different regions, you can switch between that or putting it on auto. Next up, let's try some Sonic. And one of the stages I always wanted to try is going into three-dimensional stage because some of the emulators do have problems with that. 
So let's get into that and let's see how that actually works out. So it seems to be we have no weird things going on. Like I still remember that I bought the collection of Sonic on the Nintendo DS. I was super hyped with it, getting into my favorite like game, and it was completely unplayable. You know, and that was an original system. So that's one of the reasons why I always kept like say trying to see if this is one of those let's say problems with other devices. Okay, so another thing I just wanted to see what happens actually if you're going to be quitting the game. The reason why is very simple. So if you're going to get into the game, can we actually make a normal save file or is this only working with quick load, quick save? Okay, so let's get into the game. Okay, so that is one of the tests I wanted to do. Normally when you're going to be booting up the first time, you go just out of the game, it will automatically make a quick load or at least a save file. So if you're going to be looking into like say the file save system, that doesn't work at all. So what you need to do is make a save in here. Not a big of a deal because every single game will have five slots to actually play and just save. So that's absolutely awesome. But still, the original save feature doesn't work. Okay, so the only thing I'm missing is actually a search function. That would be cool to have in here so we can just actually like search for our games. Another thing I'm looking into is like, can we find a street of rage? But it seems to be there is no street of rage in here in the fighting section. So you need to remember where you need to actually find your game. So let's see in the adventure is this? Oh, there we have. See, it's over there. So that makes no sense whatsoever again. The only thing is only like Street of Rage 2 and 3, but there is no number one. So if people want to play it, I think you need to play it through the Mega Games collection. Okay, so what would be kind of cool is if they made like an extra category for all of the homebrew and hacked games because there are still a lot of cool games out there. So let's say like Street of Rage has been, let's say, modified in many different ways with different characters. Even the complete version with the turtles in it is absolutely awesome. So far, no problem whatsoever and the audio quality is just great. That brings us to the Famicom games. Uh, to be honest, I think it's kind of cool, but it's not really necessary because this is more like I'm playing a play Sega Genesis stick, stick situation. So looking into this, we can even find ZFC files, .NS files, and Mega Drive files. So it's still weird that we need to, or you can even load up through this. I'm guessing this is a separate folder as these card where you can add yourself your own games. Do wonder like what this stick is even capable of running more. But let's try a different game. Let's try like an NES random game. So far so good. No problems whatsoever when it comes to the Famicom games. Yep, this is kind of cool that they added this to it. But and again, it's not really going to be really necessary. You can go into the quick load, quick menu, full screen. Let's go to the widescreen shenanigans. That seems to be working just fine. But I did notice in the past with some of these plug and play devices that we couldn't switch. We needed to reboot because everything was going crazy when switching between the overall resolutions. But if you're going to be adding games to this, you can just always use the feature for making a quick load and quick save. Mm. Mm. Yeah, satisfying. Come. Mm. It's a quite interesting thing to see that there is actually almost nothing, just two plastic shells. And it's unfortunate that they completely removed the chip information. Yeah, besides that, there is version 1.2 over here and it says a code name with 2022. Do wonder if this is actually made in 2022. Yeah, there is nothing much on information going on. The biggest problem I'm having is that you cannot add new controllers if these original ones stopped working. So where you can buy these things really cheap now, it's absolutely in kind of cool situation. They have like all kinds of 60-bit stuff going on. Yeah, let me know in the comments what you think of this. I want to thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing and it will be great to see you in the next video.